Okay, hello and welcome back to another virtual community meetup. My name is Olivia and I am a program manager on the Elastic Community team. Uh, we're joined today again by Enrique Courtright, Principal Education Architect, um, and he'll be presenting on the power of Elasticsearch and GPT. So really exciting presentation for you all today. Uh, if you have any questions, we'll have some time at the an end to answer those. So pop, pop those into the chat box. And then if you're catching this recording after the fact, uh, feel free to post any questions in the chat or in the, um, yeah, in the video chat. And then we'll, if you're also interested, you can also go to discuss.elastic.co um, and get your questions answered there. We'll mm -hmm. also have a link to the slide decks, uh, the slide deck included in the description of this video as well. So with that, Enrique, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Thanks, Olivia. And uh, I'm uh, very happy to be back with our community. And this is where, this is my pre preferred way of presenting because I can, I can just be at ease. I can, I can even make mistakes, and uh, it's a, it's a meetup, right? It's not. It's not a webinar or something formal like that. I also uh, probably won't have answers to all the questions. This is a very massive topic, and I'm not an expert in uh, in, in in machine le learning. I, I know enough to understand what's going on, but I cannot explain every every last algorithm. I, but, but if you put a comment, I will make a note of it, especially if you put it on the video, and uh, and we'll get you an expert answer because uh, we do have people working in the ivory tower that do that. So anyway, this is, um, before before we get going, um, I just wanna invite you to join your local uh, user groups so that you can keep up with meetups, uh, both in person and virtual like this one. Also um, be a contributor so you can contribute and uh, be a champion, be a hero. And then uh, Olivia has a lot of presents for you, uh, so. It's it's fun to be to be a member, and uh, you can share your expertise in in any of the fields that we uh, intersect, and especially we're especially interested how how you use Elastic to um, to make the world better. Okay, and of course uh, I come from the training team, so one of the reasons I like meetups is uh, this is how I test ideas, see if they make any sense once I'm presenting and then turn them into training, formal trainings that you can subscribe to or that you can you can hire us to uh, to teach it for your for your company or you know some of them may even become public offerings. Uh, so we have tons of training and more coming uh, <clears throat> coming up in areas like the stack and then uh, more um, on the edge uh, cutting edge training like uh, like what you'll be seeing today. So this is the agenda. Uh, it's a, a lot of topics, but um, so yes, it is a lot of topics and there is a lot of theory and there's a lot of technology, but I'm going to pretty much skim through all of it <clears throat> because today I'm wearing a developer hat. So I'm here to figure out how to build an app. You know, once we skip through all the mumbo jumbo of the dense vectors versus the sparse vector versus the loss function, Blah, 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 blah. So can, can I actually improve the search experience with any of this? And uh, that's what I want to concentrate on. So I will do a demo of an app that I'm working on that will be the foundations of a course targeted for developers so that as we uh, Elastic release um, new technologies and new integration uh, patterns, then we add them to the... Uh, to applications, you know, because that's where the rubber meets the road. Can I write an application that is uh, that is that is better, exciting, and and all that? So, all right. So that's the agenda. I think I'm gonna pretty much walk through all of that, and then I'm going to show you something that I really love about Elasticsearch, that will let us speed up the product our prototyping abilities for an app without getting caught into the agile loop of um, backlogs and releases and all that. And uh, this, this is one of my favorite parts of uh, Elasticsearch. All right, so what is Elasticsearch? Well, I mean, if you're here, you probably already know this, but I decided to ask um, ChatGPT itself, what is Elasticsearch? 
And it gave me a very decent uh, answer. I mean, I'm not going to read, all, read all, of, all of it or any of it. You can, you can skim through it. But I did, I did notice that it made a mistake. In the, initially, I thought it had made one tiny mistake and one really bad mistake. I thought it was saying that Kibana was a server-side data processing. No, it said Logstash, which is true. But it says it's built on Apache Lucida. And uh, I, I don't really know what that is. And so I asked um, GPT, so what do you mean by that? And this is what I get. It says, well, I'm sorry for the confusion. Uh, that was a mistake. Uh, it's actually built on Lucene. So it corrected itself really quickly. So, I mean, I, I have been impressed with ChatGPT since it came out. Since I, since I figured that, I had to like uh, understand it and and um, and learn it and 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 not hide my head in the sand that it's going to take my job away and uh, and then and, and you know imprison me in a mental prison and. Uh, you know, like the matrix. So once I got from that panic mode, I've been using it nonstop. I think it's a great tool. I think uh, I hope it gets better. Um, and it's just uh, it's just an amazing little tool. And uh, it it just does things that have been surprising everybody, because at the end it's just a little neural network. It's not a little neural network, but it's based on neurons, which are just dot products um, with a loss function. And then with a little bit of calculus, but there's trillions and zillions and zillions. And then you can imprint pictures and knowledge and then tell it, well, you know, probabilistically, what would be the, you know, if, if I give you this, what pro probabilistically would follow it based on what you know of knowledge, not uh, of human knowledge. And it does well, quite, quite an amazing job. So I think we're all impressed by that. I mean, I, I know I am. All right. So um, the Elasticsearch is great at searches. It's always been like that since the very beginning. And the reason it's the reason it's great is because for full text search, it gives very good results. It doesn't use artificial intelligence to do that because that was not a thing uh, some 10 years ago when Shai Bannon came up with it. However, it does do a great job by using a formula that is just as mathematical as any of the neurons that you use in ChatGPT, but this one is used explicitly to score documents based on a very simple idea that a document is relevant if the terms used in the search appear often. Then you know Elasticsearch says, "Oh, I must give it a higher score," and it does. But if the word appears across all the documents, then it's not that good as distinguishing like the uh, in. Um, then it, it penalizes the score. It says, well, whatever I, whatever score I give you for being popular in this blog, I, I'm going to take all that away from you because you're used in every blog. So it, that means that without even using analyzers with stop words, um, it's going to be doing a really good job of zeroing in on what is, you know, what how, how the, uh, the document matches the search terms uh, by, by just simply using frequency. Okay, um, and then you know ranking them with a decently um, developed formula, and returning them in descending order by score. By doing that, it's still it's still leading um, in efficiency and scalability. is It's a very fast uh, thing to do, and and it gives surprisingly good results, especially when you start combining it with other things like, for example, take the score and multiply it by uh, decay function so that older documents are penalized. So you, you can add your own rewarding and penalizing and boosting of the, of the score. So this algorithm is still, I mean, it's not going away. It's still very relevant and, uh, and it just works and it has been working since the beginning. Uh, however, uh, it's lexical terms, right? You just put a bunch of terms and then it likes you know, they're, you're, when the documents are ingested, they're pre-counted and put in an inverted index. So when you write a query, we take your terms, we look them up on the inverted index, uh, we look at the frequencies, and then we evaluate the document. And so I, I think, um, you know, pretty much most of you know that. And I, I have links on, on all of this if you if you want to dig deeper. Uh, this uh, blurb came from a blog. I, I read a lot of our blogs. Um, and what I like about our blogs is that they have examples. You know, they, they don't just show you the theory. They also tell you, so 
if we were looking for bog and uh, shovels, okay? So then this is how the scoring would happen. So I recommend, it's a three-part uh, blog on BM25. All right, so, um, however, Elastic has for the past three, four years been working very aggressively on, you know, just saying, well, that's not all there is. It's just not BM25. We can do better. For example, instead of letting, you know, instead of asking the user to just throw throw a few terms on the on the search box, why don't we let them ask questions? And, and also, instead of just matching term versus term, uh, well, the first thing we thought is, what about handling synonyms? Well, that's a, that's a pretty decent improvement. Yeah, but synonyms, that's okay. But what about try, an, analyzing the, you know, a sentence and looking for the word parts, the verbs, the adjectives, the nouns, and then thinking about intent and word associations and how likely are they to occur and then analyzing the text. And so, so we've been working on a collage of technologies. Uh, many, many of them yeah, have been, you know, you've probably been using. And uh, so to now, I think we're calling it the, the ESRI, the Relevance Engine. And that is just a tool, a tool set so that you can improve your searches with uh, this and that. So you could combine BM25 with maybe vector search and have the hybrid scoring through RRF, which I forget how to pronounce it, reciprocal something, uh, fusion. It's got a really cool name. Uh, and, uh, you know, and that's fine. And then adding um, the machine learning uh, component to analyze the text and look for not just for um, frequencies, but for meaning. That's that's semantic, you know, meaning semantic. That's what it, that's that's what the semantic means. So we have all sorts of uh, things that we have been adding. This is not new. This this uh, you you probably seen already webinars training and and then if you use that the, the um, if you use the stack you probably already used it. So the um, if you follow Elasticsearch from the very beginning, the genius of Elasticsearch. What impressed me mo most about this product when I found out about it four or five years ago, was, was how easy it is to use. So it is built on very sophisticated technology and it gets better and we improve the algorithms for everything. And yet the product is very, very easy to, to use. So we don't really want you to have to be a data scientist or an actuary like me. I actually studied actuarial science. Um, to, to be able to understand any of this. What we want you to be able to do is just to pick the right model for improving the results of your search. And we wanna make it be really easy for you to do to the point where, yes, if you're a data scientist and you have trained models that you borrowed or you trained them yourself, you can push them into Elasticsearch and use them. But if you don't have that, we have something new for you uh, that is in, um, it's, in fact, this is a technical preview right now. And that is an out of the box um, domain independent model that understands intent and meaning and sentence structures and also domains like, um, it understands many many of the uh, domains that we use every day, pharmaceutical stuff. Um, and that one is out of the box. You don't have to train it. You just have to use it. And then if that one gives you better results, then you know, then you use that. If VM25 is still better, then you use that. You can combine them. Um, so this is the cutting edge of where we are right now, but that's not the end. I mean, the, the people working in, in, in machine learning and in, 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 uh, in, at Elastic are not stopping uh, anytime soon. And they're doing two things, improving the technology and keeping it and making it easier for developers, which is the head of morning today, um, uh, to, to use when building applications, because that's what it's that's what this is all about. All right, so this is what it is, uh, and this is uh, you know this is straight out of a tutorial that I suggest you 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 do. It's based on Python, and it uses Python notebooks to try out all all of these ideas. Okay, so the idea is that this uh, adds semantic search to your queries. So the bottom line is, what does this do for me? It has semantic search. What does that mean? Well, this is better than synonyms. Okay, synonyms are just, you give a word and then we say, well, that's synonymous with this one, which we have in the document. So we'll call that a hit. This one actually 
takes into uh, consideration the meaning of the words and sentences and and also associations and um, so it's a very, it's a sophisticated uh, language model and it gives uh, results based on the intent of your query even though it's possible that none of the words in your query exist in the document that Elasticsearch says, this is a really good hit. Wow, but I don't have any of the words in the document. Yeah, but what you asked for is here, okay? So that's that's the level where we want to be. Uh, it's a preview right now, but not for long. I mean, I think this is where we're going. And it is uh, just another query type. So again, what what is in it for me, the developer? I use the search endpoint in my DSL, and yeah, I, you know, it's really nice to know about all that technology. And I, again, I'm, I, that, that's all good to know, and, and I'll, I'll try to stay awake for most of the discussions. But what does that do for me? Well, it's just another query type. Okay, it's more powerful than adding synonyms to VM25. Okay, uh, because it captures semantic relationships between words in English right now, but we, we can expand it. Uh, we will be expanding it down the road. So that means I just have another query type that um, will give me back results. So the question is, will these be better? And well, they, they're already better because you may be asking a question in which none of the terms, in, none of the words you use in your question match any document. So BM25 is out the window. You can add synonyms, but there's limits with how you can add synonyms. That, that, that actually creates results that are ambiguous and probably sense elastic in different in different directions. I, I have worked with synonyms and they they're they're a mixed uh, they give they have given me mixed results. Um, so this one is not like that because this this one is based on what is the intent of your sentence. And then when we encoded the document, we kind of like also broke it up into uh, semantics. So we have the semantics of the documents in the in the index and then we have the semantics of your query. And then we can do that um, proximity comparison. You know, is uh, which of these documents that you have in the index is the best match in terms of semantics to the? Um... Yes, so, so the the uh, the video will have a link to this uh, slide slide set. Yes, and also in the video, um, the first comment will be from Olivia, and she'll put the link to the slides. But then that's where you can also ask questions. You know, if you think about this and, and you say, I'd like to follow up on something, I will be watching the comments and and, uh, and looking for answers from uh, from very smart people that will probably be able to answer them better than I can. But um, yeah, yeah. So let's use the video as a, you know what happens next. All right. Now uh, on the other hand, outside the Elastic, you know, OpenAI has been busy at work, and they have come up with something that surprised everybody, and that is Gen AI. Uh, Gen AI, well, what is it? Well, it is a continuation engine, all right? You type a prompt, and then it uses neural networks. Well, let's just call it, let's just call it an engine to predict what is the most reasonable word. It does one word at a time. That's the most surprising thing. One word at a time, and then before you know it, it builds an entire conversation or a script or or the answer to your question, or it summarized something, and uh, and that combined with the you know with the fact that we don't we don't really know why neural networks work. <laughs> it's like what what on earth is happening here? Uh, the, so the good thing is that good things are happening, and if you use it for for good, um, even better things can happen. It it has it does have its limits, and in fact, I I asked um, I asked ChatGPT so. What can you do? So it says, well, I can do all these things. This is GPT-4. It's the latest in, um, in, in the sequence, okay? Uh, and then I asked it, and, the, and do you have any limits? And it's, <laughs> it's even bigger, right? Yeah, I don't understand what I'm talking about. That's one. Uh, you know, based on your prompt, I can give you totally different results. I cannot fact check what I'm doing because I don't even know what I'm talking about. Uh, yes, the, when the model was trained, the biases of the trainers are built in. I mean, think about it. Okay, so it's not it's not objective. It can't be, because you wanted to come up with reasonable discourse, so the inventors will decide 
what are things that are not good to output you know it's not a free form um, engine it, it it does have built-in biases uh, it cannot keep track of very long conversations so the the, the longer the conversation it gets it it, it kind of loses uh, it, it falls apart right now uh, I'm, I'm sure that these things will will change uh, it doesn't learn from you the, the, in fact GPT4 has been trained up to whatever's on the internet up to 2019 plus things that are not on the internet plus grammars and you know basically human knowledge up to 2019 it doesn't know anything beyond that it, it just it's just not inside the engine so it'll tell you that I mean I don't know anything uh, after 2019 of course the next one will be better um, now you can build your own chat GPT and train it up to up to what happens now it's very resource intensive uh, to run all these little neurons and do all these dot products that you know people keep talking about. Uh, we have to use tensors and GPUs, and these are massive. You, you know, you can't really do it on your laptop to train train mo a model like this one, and also to answer queries. And so that's why they put limits on interactions and, and all that. But that, I mean, that's today. Um, and then um, issues with privacy. It can generate a lot of misinformation, like uh, Apache Lucida is, does, doesn't even exist. It's not an Apache project. Uh, I have used it to ask uh, questions where the answer is exactly the opposite of what I know is true. Um, and there's no way to teach it. You know what? Uh, that's not what happened. Uh, you, can, you, can, uh, you can force it maybe with some additional resources to fact check itself during the same conversation. But, uh, but, but if you don't do that, if you, if you yourself don't know the answer, how would you fix it? How would you correct it? Uh, and it doesn't understand the real world. Um, it, I mean, it's just it's, it's just a program. Okay, it's not it's not sentient, and um, it cannot handle uh, at least ChatGPT cannot handle images or sounds. But we know that there are AI engines that can. But let's let's concentrate on this one for right now. All right. So what I want to do for you is to show you what a developer would do with what Elastic has given us, what OpenAI is doing, uh, and what I, you know, what I know how to do, assisted by uh, an engine like ChatGPT. So let's go into a demo. Well, so this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be building a search app. Okay. And the search app is very, very simple. In fact, I'm not going to complicate it much because I just want to show you what's happening behind the scenes. So uh, this, this uh, is a search uh, app for elastic blocks. <clears throat> in our training, we, we have captured the uh, uh, elastic blocks that coincidentally go up to 2019. Okay, so we have them in a database and then we convert it into an index. We use this for training all the time. So I'm gonna use it for training and I am going to begin with a BM25 approach, okay? So in BM25, what I do is I use, um, I just use a match query right here. And then BM25 is going to score the documents and rank the, you know, the ones with the highest score at the top. Now, I don't want to put the put this code. I don't want to put this code here in my client. Why? Well, because I want to change it. I want to prototype. I want to, I want to work at the speed of thought. Wasn't that what Bill Gates uh, used to say? I want to work at the speed of you know what I'm trying to prototype and think about. So this query is not, um, where, where's the query? Well, I, I want to put it, I want to templatize it, okay? I want to put the match query inside a template so that the client can make the call this way. I want the client to, to know only the ID of the search template and then pass me the parameters from the form that uh, th that makes up the web page. All the check boxes and facets and date ranges, which I, of which I put none in, in this app just to, to make it very simple. So when the client sends this REST request to Elasticsearch, it is going to get an answer, but that answer is powered by the query embedded in the search template. This is, uh, in software engineering, 
uh, it's one of my favorite patterns, which is separation of concerns, because now I can work on the elastic search side at the speed I want without having to tell them, you know what, I, I need to change the DSL. So can you please update the, your uh, your Axios uh, call to, you know, because the body has changed. I don't want to do anything like that. So search templates allow me to totally uh, separate the world of uh, the React developer um, from the world of, uh, you know, let's improve the search. What do we do? Well, maybe we should ask fuzziness. Maybe we should maybe we should search more than one field. So we have a lot of things we want to try on the VM25 side, and I don't want to wait for a release cycle and be put on a backlog. Uh, I mean, no offense, no offense, agile people, but your world is not. This world is faster because I'm trying to improve prototype, and and it has nothing to do with the app. I mean, the app is what it is, right? So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to register this template that has a very simple query, and that's the one that's driving this this version of the app. Okay, so let's ask a question. For example, um, how do I secure Elasticsearch? Now this is VM25, so you might say, well, what is this fool doing asking a question? That's just based on terms. Well, I wanna challenge that, okay? The reason I wanna challenge that is because words like how do I, are going to get not thrown away because I'm not using any analyzer that throws away stop words. I'm not, I'm not even using the English analyzer. I'm just relying on the fact that VM25 is going to give them very low scores because probably a lot of the blogs have them. So then the commonality across blogs is going to lower the score anyway. I don't have to throw them out. I don't have to understand. I don't even have to understand what they are. I kind of like this ability of VM25 to just say, if it's common, it's useless for uh, relevance. If it's unique, then I'm going to start you know, saying, well, how many times did you say Elasticsearch and secure? Now, it, it, the, right now, I'm not even using an analyzer that uses any kind of stemming. So the words have to appear in the, um, in the title, okay? So you might go, wanna go back and say, well, we can do a lot better than that. For example, we can, we can improve by, you know, and, and this improvement can be done behind the scenes. I'm gonna do a multi-match, and then I'm going to add uh, fuzziness for uh, spelling, you know, tolerance. So then when I run this, notice that I'm not even reloading that. I'm just gonna click enter. So now I'm gonna get better results because now uh, I'm search, or I, maybe I'm gonna get more results, better in the sense that, you know, some of them get a higher relevance score. And then you can, you know, you can continue the BM25 route and then add boosting. And, uh, you know, so, so you end up with a scoring hierarchy. This is all BM25 where you improve your results by saying, well, you know, if what you put in the, if what you put in the uh, search search box, is um, is a phrase in the title, boost it. If it's a phrase in the content, boost it. If it's not a phrase but it's all in the title, boost it. So so you know this is all BM25, and so I can I can continue my prototyping and exploration of what BM25 can do, uh, and come up with better and better results. And most websites in the world do that, okay? Most of them don't use yet anything beyond that, but they're very sophisticated scoring methodologies that use boosting uh, functions that take into account the age of the, the, the document, um, maybe the number of hits, maybe you wanna promote something. I can do all that with BM25. So let's not, let's not forget about that. Uh, however, um, I did, you know, I am interested in in this thing about um, this this whole thing about um, you know this uh, semantic search that keep, you know people keep talking about. Uh, I want to know if it's real in the sense that can I can it give me better results if I want to secure Elasticsearch? Will I get will I get something better something that I would not get because maybe I'm using the wrong terms and BM25 will not fight. I'm not even using synonyms yet. I mean, I could do that, but I, wa I wanna go a different path. I wanna go, I wanna go semantic search. So to do that, the, uh, actually the entry to that is very, very low. I can go to the models app in Kibana 
that I don't want to lose my console. Okay, anyway, I'll go back to the console. And then I this one is already out of the box in 8.8. .8. All you have to do is, it won't look like this the first time you use it. It'll say, you, you want to download it? So you click, yes, I want to download it. It'll take a few minutes, maybe five, 10. And then uh, it still won't work because you have to run it, okay? Now that by itself does not do anything because that's just the model and you have not run your documents through that. So if I really want to use semantic search in my searches, which is what I want to do next in my, in my app, I really need to go back, you know, once I download the model and start it, and what I need to do is I, uh, and I'm following one of the one of the blogs that um, that I'm giving you as a as a reference. You can use with Langchain. Uh, I, I don't know how to do that, but yes, you can. Uh, there, there's a there's there's a blog on that. Um, I'll, I'll, I I don't have it in the references, but I'll but I'll find it. Um, all right. So from from that instruction manual, which was that blog. Uh, what you do is you take the blocks index. That's where we have all the blocks you've been seeing on the search app. And I am going to add a place to put the um, to put the processing of the model uh, for every one of my blocks. So that you know when I run them through the model, and I'm going to do that through a pipeline. All right. Uh, this field is going to be populated, and I'm going to show you that in just a second. Second, but I, I need to add them to the mapping. I already did that, and then I need to add uh, a pipeline that will use the inference processor with the Elser model, and the one that you know is making these claims that it's so easy to use. And and then uh, what I want to do is I want to take the content field. So that's the content. You know, these are entire blocks. I don't know, 5,000 words in, in a blog. And I'm going to run them through the um, through the model using the inference processor. And I'm going to leave all the results in here. So this pipeline is going to be used for encoding my documents so that I can use them with uh, Elser. You want to see what one of them looks like. For example, how would a query look like? Uh, you know, like the one that we were, you know, how do I secure? How do I secure Elasticsearch? If I run that through the um, through the model through, through a pipeline and then th you know using the pipeline through the model, this this would turn my words into all of these tokens. One of the things about the uh, Elser is that it's using the same inverted index that we use for uh, BM25. So as far as data structures and efficiency, it's already on a on a firm footing because all of that stuff is really mature and, and really fast. So this is what my this is what my query looks like. You can imagine what my um, my documents look like. In fact, I already I already ran them. So what I did is I did an update by query and ran them through this pipeline. And then, if you want to see what they now look like, uh, I can just say get uh, blogs, Elsir, search. Let's just look at maybe some titles. And uh, their ML opens. So, well, they're in there somewhere. I'm just not pulling them all properly. Uh, but I did, I did, I did encode them, and they are there. And I have a query somewhere else that does that. Um, Usually, when I run when I run these demos, and some something fails, and in this case, it is this. Uh, oh, well, I'm not I'm not going to bug you. With, I'm not going to bother with you with debugging this. But anyway, so what I want to do now that I run all my documents through the model, and they have the you know, and they all they all have uh, semantic information in the form of tokens. Okay. Then now I can see if I can query and do better. Right? That's that's what that's what this is about, right? So I am going to skip the BM25, and then all I have to do, and this is the this is the brilliance of uh, how all this technology is being integrated. It's being integrated for use by the developer. So this would be really bad if I had to use a Python program embedded in something. Uh, what they have added is a, you know the query type. So now I can say the following. 
Um, I want to match, I added a, a little filter for US, US blogs. And what I would like to do is to replace the search blocks template with one that uses the text expansion query on these terms. Okay. And by just simply re-registering it and then running the same query without even reloading the page, then I get better results, more driven by semantics. And I and I do think that they are doing that. Uh, in fact, I had a query that was really not telling. Um, this one is a little bit more ambiguous because it has fewer words that I can that I can use. Um, if I run this one through BM25, even using the most uh, advanced one that I came up with, okay, it's not going to have much to work with, right? How do I use APM? Not much to work with. So it's going to give me <laughs> some things that don't even make any sense. Um, I'm sure the word APM might even be in Korean. <laughs> I, I don't have a clue, but it doesn't, I didn't give it much to work with, so it didn't really do a good job. When I switch over to semantics, by simply re-registering the template, then um, let's see if it has anything better to work. And now it's like, you know, totally on, on the money and I have to admit that it is uh, very good because it's uh, it understands the idea that what I'm asking is not to throw away the words how do I use. It's it's understanding that I want to know how to do something, all right. And it's going to be looking for that meaning and intent in these um, uh, in these documents for them to get a high score, all right. So, uh, so far, so good. I think I think it is better. I think it, it is great technology. It, it is superior to Synonym. So I think I'm going to be using it. Uh, what is the price? Latency is not as good as BM25. But I, I mean, I don't think it's bad. I think it's also very quick. In fact, if you're on the search page, you know, you, you, you don't even see it blink, right? Uh, how do I add log correlation to APM? Let's see, and it's not too bad. It even found one of my little blogs, which is on exactly that. Um, this blog is on Java applications, but it went all the way to figuring out that I was talking about how to uh, do a log correlation. So, so far, so good, all right? Uh, so far, this is, uh, this is really cool. But what I'm after is, Okay, that's, a, that's the Elastic Search ML. I'm really happy with it, and I think it, it does improve my search apps drastically. But that's not a revolution. That's just an incremental improvement. As good as it is, I would say, yeah, it's really good, but I, I wouldn't, you know, the title of this talk was Revolution, right? And where is the revolution? Well, it's here. So what I want to do is I want to turn it on. By the way, if it doesn't work, I did take some screenshots because this one is not up to me, right? It's a service that I'm calling and I am going to ask, um, let's see, which one, which prompt do I want to use? I'm going to ask this question, a very simple question. Um, so I'm going to reload it. And now it loaded with the call to chat GPT active. So I'm using my own API key and my own account. And I think uh, I have money in it. So it's not going to tell me what do you mean you're out of you're out of money, right? So I'm gonna look for the fundamental question that uh, brought us all here. What is the elastic stack? All right, so I'm using semantic search. So I think the, the answers are really good. And then I should put a spinner. Now this is the revolution, right? It read the blogs, the two of two, summarized them, and then I asked it more. I told it, you know, besides reading and summarizing the blogs, which is by itself an amazing capability, I asked it, and is anything in the blog an answer to the question? And then it says, what is the elastic stack? Well, based on the contents of the two blogs, it actually answered the question um, that I asked in the, in, in the prompt, okay? so. 
uh, I'm, I'm still kind of blown away by how good this is uh, because now I can ask things like, uh, how do I write a Kibana plugin? You know, things that I wanted to know and if the information is, is uh, dug in one of our blogs, let's see if it is. So here's the two top two blogs. And it says, uh, the answer to the question, I, it says, I don't know. <laughs> From the content of the top two blogs, maybe, you know, then I can expand it. Well, why don't you try the top five? Or what I could do is I, I could play, you know, some people call it devil's advocate. I could say, well, what about BM25? Would that do better? than semantic search because there will be cases where it does do better okay and it did find logstash input plugin but it said no neither ne none of these ask about um no, neither one of neither one of the top two blogs talk about kibana plugins and i don't think we have any blogs on that we we have uh, we maybe we did at some point but in, instead if i ask about does it whoa well, it's bound to happen, right? Um, what happened to my, um, well, here it is. <laughs> How do I write? I'm still going to try it. Uh, Luxtash plugin. This is very much, um, yeah, I, I, I don't have, uh, you know, all the, all the, um, I should use it only on the prompts that I that I prepare for the talk, but I like to adventure out. So let me let me use some of the prompts that I had tested before. I don't I don't have all the error validation. And um, how about this one? This one is uh, let's see if it's still alive. Okay, so how do I how do I monitor Java applications with um, APM? Okay. And then it says, okay, so um, the first blogs, here's a summary. And then to, you know, to your question, um, to monitor Java applications with APM, you can use the last day by installing blah, blah, blah. So it did give a reasonable answer to how would I monitor Java application with APM? I, I would need that Java that elastic Java agent, I would not need to know something at this level. So at a minimum, I, I know that these blogs are worth reading. So I said, yeah, I would go to those blogs. And because I, now I know that it's more than just keyword match, it's more than semantic match. It is also reading the text using Gen AI and seeing if I can actually do this based on the content of those blogs. All right, so um, that to me is a, is a really good combination of um, using Gen, Gen AI, but restricted to your data, right? I mean, I don't wanna ask this question out there because the, the answers may not be valid. In fact, I'm not even, I'm not even looking for speculation, hallucination, I'm not asking uh, ChatGPT to make up an answer. I'm asking very specific things. Can you summarize this for me? And then based on this and only this is, is the answer that I'm looking for here. I'm not going out into the world of the internet and finding out something that is going to be untrue. Uh, and, 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 I, and also I'm not exposing my data, right? On, except for what I want ChatGPT to see. Um, so it's a it's a really good combination of the security, scalability, and quality. You know, before I asked ChatGPT anything, I already had really good semantic-driven results. And then I asked ChatGPT, okay, well, can you do some can you do some ChatGPT magic like summaries and um, and can you can you just see if the the answer is here, right? So um, I'm I was I was very happy with that. In fact, I've been playing with this little app that, that you know I've been building for the past uh, week or so, and uh, and just having fun because we have a lot of content in our blogs, and if you just look for for <clears throat> if you look for them even with semantic search, yes, you will get hits. But so what about them? I need to read the whole thing and then only to know that's not what I'm really looking for. Um, well, at least this one tells me. No, 
uh, that blog does not have anything that even remotely looks like what you are looking for. So that's that. To me, that's a big help. All right. So what's... How would you suggest highlight relevant part with... Yeah, so I, I, I still, you know... I, this is this is the very first version of this app, and uh, I need to. Uh, we have highlighting, but those highlighting work with uh, semantic search, and I haven't tested that. Okay, so there are a lot of things that I need to know if semantic search will support. Now, what I can do is do a dual search, right? I can I can still combine them, and then I can see how the combined scoring will work, and then I can use the highlighting from the match queries. Which which works really well, and uh, and then highlight using that, but um, I I would rather if they would build to the text expansion query highlighting capabilities, right? So I'm just going to wait on that. I remember this is a tech preview. Um, this is this is a tech preview, and and it's there for us to evaluate and provide feedback. So that's great feedback, for example. All right, um, so. Um, so this is what we did. You know, if you want a summary of all the things that I that I did, and then at the end is uh, what about the limitations? Well, the limitations were addressed by not letting not letting it fly off into never neverland because I start with my data and I can still use natural long language queries with semantic search. So I start in the world of Elasticsearch and then I fly off and ask ChatGPT to do something very constrained for me that I know will be useful. Okay, I mean, it's not a speculation, it's just summarize this text. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to look at some of the other use cases that ChatGPT is good for and then bring them back into the Elasticsearch world one at a time. Okay, so I'm working from the point of view that I already had something uh, in the form of a search page. I already know how to improve it using BM25 and it works very well for me and most most uh, of our customers, I'm not going to name any names, that's what they use and they, they get very, very good results. They sell stuff by, by pl placing the, the, the best results at the very top. And BM25 rules that world. But I, that's, where, that's where I'm starting from. So now I want to know, so is semantic search better? And I think it is. And then whether I use BM25 or not, then how do we branch out into the world of AI? And right now, we don't have that much in plugins, but I'm thinking we will. Um, so right now, the bridge is just REST APIs, right? Uh, but that's OK, because clients can do that very easily, like I, like I did here. Um, so this is, uh, this is the prompt that I sent to ChatGPT from uh, my React app. I said, hey, ChatGPT, you're a helpful assistant. This is what I want you to do. Summarize the following two hits. That, that, that's why one crashed, because probably the second one was not. I don't know. It's Something made my program crash. And it wouldn't be a good demo if, if, if uh, the program didn't crash, right? So, not, so now we pass that test. And then I followed it with, OK, using only the content from these two blogs, which is a question that I picked up from one of the, one of the blogs that, uh, that we have out there on, uh, on all this stuff. In fact, there's a blog on how to integrate uh, Elastic with ChatGPT using Python, and I kind of borrowed the prompt from there. So this is the search term in the box, and I said, using only the content from these two blogs and nothing else, can you answer this question? If you can't, just you know, don't speculate. You know, don't don't drift and invent things. Just be honest. Say no, I don't think there's anything here, and and I kind of think it will be right. Okay. Uh, so here are some screenshots that I took in case uh, it didn't work. <clears throat> so I took two of these, including the one on. So what is the elastic stack? And I had the temperatures, the, the temperature of the request. I don't have the whole request, but I have the temperature set to zero so that I have predictable answers. If you raise the temperature, then you will get creative answers every time you use it. Some people like a temperature of 0.8 because then they get uh, variability. Here I'm not looking for variability. I'm looking for a summary and an answer to a question if it can find it, right? I, I mean, I don't want three different summaries. I'm, I want the one. Um, all right, so what's next? Well, for the app is uh, I want to 
use this as a vehicle for prototyping uh, technologies from the point of view of the developer. Okay, so I'm not going to, um, I mean, I, I know enough about neural nets. Don't, you know, don't misunderstand. I do know what they're based on. And I, and I just, you know, took a refresher course in differential equations. And so I, I know the foundations, but I don't want to know when I'm wearing the developer hat. I want to know if they're easy to use using the search endpoint. And if they're not, I'm going to wait until they are. So I'm not going to use crazy bridges that that set the bar very high for the traditional user of Elasticsearch. So I'm just going to be me uh, with my my most fun role, which is a developer. And then I'm going to look at um, what else can we do to ex extend the Bootchat GPT functionality. Okay. And then I'm going to build a class with my, you know, with my colleagues. We're going to build a class for developers on how to build these uh, cutting edge um, apps. Um, you know, taking advantage of the latest and greatest of Elastic ML with the latest and greatest of tools such as ChatGPT and many others. Uh, many others such as, well, as long as they have an API, I mean, Midjourney, Dali, Bard. I mean, I don't know, right? The sky, the sky is the limit. I mean, I don't know where this is going, and that's what makes it all fun and creative. So. So what are the next steps? We have a machine learning workshop coming up and uh, from the description, it looks pretty amazing. That one, even though you don't have to be a data scientist, but you're interested in the theory and you know, what, is a, <clears throat> what, is, what is a vector, um, what is a dense vector versus a sparse vector. If you wanna know all that, uh, that workshop will go into the weeds of the machine learning side, okay? Um, as a developer with that hat, I'm not that interested in that as long as it gives good results. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm okay living with the um, with, with results that I can see are better. You know, they, they're more insightful than, I, than, what, than what I was able to find before. Whether it's a dense vector or not, um, uh, I'm not, you know, as a developer, I'm not going to say who cares. I mean, we, we, we all care, but it's not that relevant, speaking of relevancy. Okay, now you can try, you know, if, you, if you're at work and you're using a stack and it's like a little bit old, you know, it's really old, like an 8.5 stack. <laughs> uh, you want to try the 8.8.2, .8 I think, is the last one. Just that, you know, sign up for a trial account. And then, uh, now, if you want to use the live demo, you can always do that. I don't know how, if it's current yet, but it will be. And then you can also take uh, our trainings and, uh, you know, keep an eye on, on the course that uh, that is basically going to teach you how to build and evolve uh, this tool, this uh, this app is going to stay very simple. So if you're a, if you're a React developer, the most uh, the most I put in there was uh, Bootstrap so that it doesn't look ugly. And also a lot of what I put in there, um, since I don't do that every day, I asked ChatGPT to please help me out. Uh, up, up to the point where you know if I struggle with a bit of code, I can ask ChatGPT, "What's wrong about this code?" And it it says in a very polite way what is bad about the code. And, and it is right. It, it's really good at code comprehension and code generation and code. I don't know. I, I guess it searches all of GitHub and finds good stuff. Uh, it, it's not just neural networks. It's also a, a really good tool that knows how to do what we need. Okay. And then, of course, you can, you know, you can do more. You can get certified as an engineer. We don't have a machine learning or data scientist certificate. Um, but we do have some if you want credentials. Now, I put uh, a lot of the things that I've been reading lately here, including, um, you know, if you really want to build your own chat GPT, if you want to know exactly what does chat GPT do, how is it that it's not an intelligent being like the matrix that is going to, uh, you know, do, do bad things to the world. If you want to know what it really is, you can actually build one. So this last link is a great um, video playlist from someone named Andrej Karpaj. And from the ground up, from a neuron, all the way up to a ChatGPT, kind of like a ChatGPT2. Uh, if you want to follow that, which I, you know, I have been doing for fun, uh, you can do that. But if you don't care about that, just uh, follow all of these. And you kind of like be, will be following my, uh, my footsteps. So um, I think we have some time for Q&A.
Uh, like I said, some of them I may deflect and ask you, please put them on the video and I'll, I'll look them up. Um, Perfect. Thanks, Enrique. So it uh, looks like we answered a majority of the questions. Uh, there was one about uh, can we use with Ling Chang? And I know that you actually referenced an article in your references. Is there anything else that you want to follow up on? I also um, added a link in response to that question in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, and follow up on the video. We'll, we'll keep an eye on the video comments and then, because, we, you know, uh, the fact that I'm wearing a developer hat doesn't mean that we don't have all the people in the ivory tower that can explain to the minor, most minute detail any of your questions. Um, so for your benefit and my benefit. Also, if you have suggestions for, uh, you know, if you build these types of apps and you want to you, you, you want to suggest where, where, where should we take it next? What do you want to see built on top of that app? you know, like better highlighting. I think we have a lot happening with faceted searches um, that I want to explore. So put them in the comments of the video. Yes, put them in the comments. And if you're ever interested in doing a virtual presentation, um, you don't have to work for Elastic to participate in these. We'd love to, to have people from the community, whether uh, you are a free and open user or you're a customer, we'd love for you to um, participate in our meetups, virtual or in person. Um, but with that, that's all I have from my side. Um, Enrique, I'll turn it over to you and you can take us out. I think that's it for me. Um, let me just uh, remind you to look into training because that's that's where I come from. And community and training, I think that'll keep you up to speed, plus reading all the blogs and tutorials. If you're, a, if you're an Elastic fan person like I am, uh, that's a way to keep up with the latest and greatest. Perfect. Well, thank you. And thank you everyone for uh, tuning in and we'll see you all soon. Bye. Thanks everyone.